Hi, I'm Ray, G4NSJ. This is a Trio SSB transceiver, TS120V. Anyway, I'm not going to show you that. That's for something later. I want to show you this. This is my Yesu FRG7 communications receiver. How about that? With a digital display unit on top, <laughs> which at first I thought was... Uh, not working correctly. I'll show you close up in a minute. Um, I've I've never owned one of these until now, of course. I remember back in the was it seventies, eighties, people ranting and raving. Oh, the FRG seven, brilliant receiver. Never had one. Remember, a friend of mine had one. I never actually had a go on it. Anyway, now I'm the proud owner of one of these. So let's take a closer look at it. Okay, this is the Yesu FRG seven. Um, couple of weird things about it. First of all, this here, attenuator. Okay. DX, normal, local, fine, not a problem. Normally, DX is maximum sensitivity, okay? No attenuator. Normal would probably be middle, in the middle of attenuator. Local, the attenuator fully in for strong local stations, fine. This is different. That is the full attenuator in for local, fair enough. Normal is maximum sensitivity. DX is sort of half attenuate, halfway. So I mean, you would expect full attenuation, half attenuation, no attenuation. That's what I would have thought. Anyway, there we are. And I have checked other YouTube videos to make sure I'm not going mad. I thought this switch was wired incorrectly. But no, that is right. Another thing people do... On, I've seen a chap, he said, right, the way to do this, you're on, say, 15 meg, you turn this till the light comes on. Like that, you don't. You turn it till the light is off. Okay, so that's 15 megs, 15, 340 on there. What threw me initially was 340 kilohertz. Okay, 340 kilohertz. That's kind of a long wave, isn't it? The non-directional beacons, 340 kilohertz. What's that doing up there? What you have to do <laughs> is 15.340 megahertz, all right? Or the way they do it these days, which is awful. 15340 kilohertz. I like the old megs, 27 megs, CB, 28 megs, 10 meter amateur band. Anyway, so what you do is if you want to go obviously to 15 15 megs okay light off normal for maximum signal uh, sensitivity this is just a tone control i don't know why they have a tone control really and that's it so if we have a tune in listen in there we are i forget what that is i think it's um is it Romania or something? I can't remember. But that's 15.34 megs. And it's quite useful to have this box, I suppose. Initially, I was going to chuck it out. I thought, that's no good. It doesn't work. <laughs> 340 kilohertz. I'm on 15 megs. That's uh, Radio Romania belting in, what's the S meter say? 20 over 9. The aerial I'm using is an active uh, antenna, the mini whip. You know, the mini whip, I use that from, well, VLF right the way through to 30 megs, which is pretty good. And you can probably see that there. Cheap old CB aerial switching unit. So the mini whip comes in there. I can switch it to four receivers. One, two, three, and the SDR on the computer. As I say, I've only recently acquired this. I had to clean up. Here's a picture of it uh, when I first got it, I think someone must have thrown a cup of coffee over it by the look of it. Look at that. It was absolutely filthy. But it's cleaned up really well. I took all the knobs off and washed them and polished them. <laughs> um, so I've had a good old go at it and it's looking really nice now. I'm pleased with it. I'm just going to show you another close-up of uh, the controls because the, the pre-selector and the band switch and the megs of the tuning, it's different. When I first switched it on, I thought, yeah, what's going on here? I've got 
I was on medium wave and it didn't seem to matter where the band switch was, I was getting a strong local station. Something's not right here. But uh, I'll, I'll show you another close up and we'll just go through those controls. Right, I hope that's clear enough. Let's just turn the volume down for a minute. Okay, that's 15.340 megs. Let's go to medium wave. So the band switch, which is there, 0.5 to 1.6 megs. You probably notice these lights here go up and down, look. Okay, so what we do is set this now. We want medium wave. Hope you can see the numbers. I'm going to set it to one meg. All right, now there's the, the light on. Light off, one meg. That's the middle of the medium wave band, isn't it? Just turn the volume up a bit now. Okay, we now set this pre-selector. For maximum. Right, say we want to listen to, is it Guernsey or Jersey? I can't remember. Now, is it 1026, isn't it? I think 1026, one of them. So we've got, we've got the one. Okay, also here we want, so we want 026. Okay. Uh, okay. 026. Tune that up. That's it. That's Radio Guernsey or Jersey. Not too strong. It's not meant to be here, is it? It's miles away from me. So that's that. Let's go for Radio Caroline, which is, what is that? 648 kilohertz. So what we'll have to do is set that one there to naught because we don't want any megs. We want 648. So on this dial, we go to 648. And then adjust the pre-selector. Turn the volume up a bit. Can you see on the bottom here where we are? It's that way you want to go, isn't it? Turn that for maximum S meter reading. 648, Caroline. Okay, that's the way it works. A little bit of getting used to this, especially when it's you've got to read this here. <laughs> uh, you go to the megs you want. This goes from 0 to 29, is it, or something, or 30. So set that, then set this. As I say, the lights go up and down depending on the band you're on. Okay, then tune in your main dial, and there you go. We'll turn Caroline down for a minute. I won't show you the back because it means pulling it all out, but basically on the back you've got a, there's a couple of connections for muting if you use it with a transmitter. So on transmit it shuts the receiver up. There's a ground connection and a high impedance connection for a, a wire antenna, but a, an, SO an SO239 socket, which is what I use because all this is coax fed, you know, the mini whip and all that. So, um, yeah, basically that's it. it. It can take internal batteries. Someone's nicked the battery holders out of this one. Not that I want internal anyway. It's mains, got its own mains power supply, or you can run it from 12 volts. Um, the bit of wood I've stuck under there is just to prop it up a bit because it's a bit low down. Um, so, yeah, you can run it from 12 volts if you want to, if you'd rather use it in the car or out on a, a picnic or something if you're going to tune around for some DX or whatever. But it's a fantastic little thing. Upper and lower sideband. Um, this isn't a review. I'm just showing you what I've got and how to use it, basically. It's not a review. I did a... What was it? On the... Um, well, I was on this, wasn't it? The Texan S2000. My last video, in fact, I did a, a little chat about that one. And a chap said to me, oh, you didn't mention this, you didn't mention that signal to noise ratio, how to use the squelch and the RF gain control. And uh, and he said, it probably, if you're watching this one, uh, have another go, do another comment. He said, my Kenwood here, or he said, although it's good, sounds like a tractor. A tractor? He hasn't heard my Kenwood. How could you say my Kenwood sounds like a tractor? 
What does a tractor sound like? Kind of, duh, 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 I don't know. Anyway, I can assure you my Kenwood does not sound like a tractor. Neither does the other TS570D I've got over there. This one I use just for receiving. The other one is for transmitting as well. So this isn't a review. I'm just showing you the FRG7. Uh, why am I showing it to you? I don't know. Because I'm quite pleased with it. And I thought I'd show you. Especially the little box on top. That lid I'm going to take off and spray it. There's a hole there. I don't know what was in there. Possibly a switch or an LED. I don't know. But it's quite nice. It's pretty good on the amateur band. Sensitivity is excellent. Selectivity, mm, a bit iffy. Especially compared to Kenwood. Or the, the low HF150 even. There's no switchable filtering. You, know, you can't narrow it. When I was listening to um, Jersey or Jersey or whatever the other day, I thought Jersey or Jersey. <laughs> oh, you know, the Channel Islands. There was a strong station next to one of them that was splattering. And of course, I can't, there's no switching to narrow the filter. Having said that, it's not a problem. I use this mainly for HF broadcast stations and medium wave, of course. Um, I'm not too worried about amateur bands. I've, I've got all my amateur band gear that side of the room. So that's about it. Rather nice. Oh, there's a switch on the front that says light. Turns the dial light on and off. That's for when you've got it on batteries, obviously to you know, conserve power because you don't want an extra current drain. So that's why you can turn the lights off. As I said, could have done with a, a, a bit of filtering, switchable filtering, and possibly an RF gain control. I know it's got the attenuator, but an RF gain control would have been nice. Uh, it's, it's a basic receiver. Um, it's I use it mainly for broadcast stations, not for amateur stuff. As I say, I've got all the amateur gear over there. It's mainly for broadcast. The audio quality is pretty good. The tone control, <laughs> it's low, normal or, or narrow, it says. I, I don't know. It's sort of basically it's top cut. So it's full top, top cut a bit, top cut completely, which they call low. Um, I don't know. Again, if you're going to have a tone control, why not have a pot? You know, it's so simple, isn't it? Instead of a switch. Maybe there wasn't room. I don't know. Because the built-in speaker is nice on the front. Because a lot of my other gear like this, um, it's got its own speaker built in. But they're very small. You've got to have an extension speaker. The Texan S2000 has got a nice speaker in the front, of course. So there we are. Uh, got a record socket on the front. I don't know whether you want to record anything. I suppose in the old days you plug your cassette tape recorder in there, wouldn't you? Headphone socket on the front, which is good. That's useful. Uh, that's about it. Okay, as I say, it's not a review, so don't in the comments put, oh, you didn't mention signal to noise ratio or whatever. Uh, as I said, it's, uh, did I tell you it's triple conversion, which is nice. It's a good receiver. Actually, it is very sensitive, especially on the mini whip aerial. Okay, that'll do for now. Thanks for watching. I shall see you next time, no doubt. Take care. Bye-bye for now.